Oh, yeah. Wow. Keep in mind, we've had zero problems with our water system. Um, this is just an upgrade. Our mainer bean is equipped with this good quality Seaflow water pump. We're just going to change it out for a slightly larger model. Okay, I'm going to shut off the pump, relieve the pressure, and get to work. Four screws, side cutters. This is our freeze protection. This wouldn't be on a standard bean. Okay. That's what it would normally look like, except for this bit of uh, heat strip that's running along the uh, water line and also across the pump head. So I have to cut these more zip ties. Now I need a, a driver for taking off the water line. I could use a screwdriver, but I have a, a socket. Let's see, what is it? Uh, 5 16 I'm going to cut off some of this when I install the new pump, so I may as well not struggle. I'll just go ahead and cut it off. And there's a little bit of water. Not much. And now I'll just cut this side off. There we go. I need a Phillips screwdriver again. Get this keeper off. There it is. I'm sure I'm going to have plenty of wire on the new pump. So I'm just going to pull this back a little. And Cut it off right at the connector. There it is. That's the red to the pump. Here's the black to the pump. And now the old pump is disconnected. I'm going to round up the new pump. The inlet is on this side here. You can see the arrow. This pump comes with a, a sight glass um, filter, and because the inlet comes this way, we're going to want to mount it like so. I looked into the Seaflow. It can be mounted in any position, horizontal, vertical. It just doesn't matter. So I'm going to install it, you know, what looks like upside down. I found that I want to come down three quarters of an inch from the bottom of this flange that the uh, stove mount is lined up to. Center punch mark. I'm just going to put in one fastener, level it out, put in the others. The mounting feet are a pretty um, stiff rubber material. There's the size for my pilot hole. Bean uses some very high quality panels for their construction, so you do need to drill pilot holes. You won't be able to start a screw in this type of material. It's a multiply with a, uh, a mammaline type bonded surface. And I have looked behind this bulkhead. I've had the electrical panel out from the inside, so I know what it looks like back here. It's a, it's a hollow space, uh, several inches deep. There aren't any uh, wires, at least not on our bean. There's nothing uh, attached to this back wall. So it's a safe place to drill. Still, you don't want to drill clear to the end just until you get past the um, material, and that's deep enough. Again, I have a little more to fiddle with here than a typical bean. I get the fastener lined up with a hole. I get a big old noggin in the way. Sorry about that. 
There we go. And then I have a socket on the flow motor. Keep that up to you. That's one. You can't quite get the, the drill motor in to where this is at. The head's too big. So I'm going to make a mark. And what I need to do is just mark the center of this mount there. Our cabinet has lighting. Uh, it's something that I added to the trailer. If you don't have lighting in your cabinet, you're going to want to set up some type of a work light for doing this job. I'm going to have to double check that with a tape measure. But that's about where they belong. And now, sorry to say, I'm going to have to take that back off. But this is uh, real life, right? Things don't always go exactly as planned. It's okay. I should have a square is what I should use, but I don't have one handy. This has got to be reasonably square. I tore off a lid to the, the box that the pump came in. So we want this to be straight down from the other mark. So that just gives me a little dimple. If you don't have a center punch, it is a handy little tool to have for all kinds of drilling operations. Because it's such a, a slippery surface, you know, as the drill bit spins, it wants to move off of the line. are clear and drive it home. Okay, I'll leave it pretty loose because I need to get these other fasteners in. No, come on Dave. Okay, there it is. Give it a shove and it just feels like it's sticking to the hole. There it is. cinch things down. Okay, they are tight. The pump has movement, which it's supposed to. There's no way it's going to fall off the wall. I'm expecting that pump is going to work great. If you don't have wire strippers like this, you probably have some sort of wire strippers. And I'm just going to do the hot first. I'm just using a common uh, crimp connector. It's the spot right there. A good crimp. You know, it's basically a, a mechanical bond. That's all it needs. If you own a trailer, you know, I think it pays. Eventually, you're going to want to get a little connector kit. This is just something I've had for, you know, years and years, and I just add to it when something empties out. You want to twist the, the cut end fairly well because you don't want to push the wire in and have it turn into a little rat's nest. Okay, those are rock solid. Uh, you can run this pump dry. It doesn't have to have water in it. So I think I'm gonna turn on the power and check this pump out real quick. Okay, this is our our inlet side. 
coming from the tank comes up and I want to cut this off the length of the uh, connector end here. Uh, this pump does not come with these little connectors. I'll have a link for this in the description. You do have to have these adapters to go to the size the bean is plumbed with. I have a tubing cutter in my shop which is a little ways away from where I'm at right now. Um, a razor knife is going to work just fine. So we want to cut this off even with the uh, shoulder of that connector which is right here. That's it. And the screw clamp is already on our tubing so that just slips over here a nice snug fit which is great i mean that's what you want it's a little bit of a pain to get it connected but there we go that's on now put this in the hand driver you don't want to overdo it with these or you can um, tear up the the sprocket essentially that's on the the banding material just a good snug screwdriver tightness is all that's needed there I don't need to trim it off okay but now I have learned a little something about the snug fit let's get just a drop of detergent we use this um, Dr. Bronner's we have different types this peppermint stuff I've been using since the 70s backpacking and as a wildland firefighter you know you can use it as shampoo you read it I mean you can you can brush your teeth with it it's just a do-all biodegradable soap and I'm gonna put just a dab it's highly concentrated I'm gonna put a dab on the end of this just to help make it a little slicker okay Oh yeah, look at that. It just it just pushed right on. No problem at all. And that's a really cool trick to keep in mind. And it's not gonna hurt the uh, the plumbing, that type of pipe. It can be used with all kinds of chemicals and whatnot. So the soap isn't gonna hurt that. And there's no poisons or toxins or anything like that in the soap. So no concerns at all. Okay, now I need to do some clamping to make everything back to its freeze protection. But before I do that, I think I'll go ahead and run the system with water and we'll check for leaks. Turn it on. There's some air in the system yet and it's got to pump through. I can already hear that this is much quieter I'll do a little side-by-side -side so we can hear the difference. If you have a, a standard bean and you don't have all this um, freeze protection, uh, that's all that it would take. Probably more than half of the effort I put into this was uh, associated with the freeze protection. By the way, if you're interested in our freeze protection system, I've made a video on that. Let me get all this tucked away and we will move on. We use our cabinet space for storage and definitely don't want plumbing or electrical to be falling down into where we uh, move things in and out. That looks like it. Let's see what it sounds like compared to the old pump. This is what our old pump sounds like from a distance of about uh, three feet from the cabinet. And here's what the new pump sounds like. I've capped the outlet drain so we can just listen to the pump itself.
and that's it. The sink is working fantastic. Let's check out the spray port. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, we could use a little more pressure for hosing off dishes, washing your hair, taking a shower, things like that. Having this kind of pressure, I think in some ways it actually can conserve water because um, the rinse is more effective. I really like this little shower head. It's a lot more functional than our old one. It's also quite a bit more compact, so it's easier to store in our shower box. And I really like the simple and convenient off and on trigger. Um, one of the things that I really like about this pump is you can actually set the pressure using an Allen wrench at the uh, bottom of the pump. It can be cranked up to, I think, um, 45, 50 pounds, something like that. I think the old pump was running just a little over um, 25 pounds. Anyway, I really like this upgrade. You have probably noticed our shower head mount. The only issue I have with this, it is made entirely of plastic and clearly it's not going to hold up to the rigors of camping for very much longer. I don't want to wait until it breaks down on a trip. So um, we're replacing it with this much nicer quality um, shower head mount. Stainless steel, it essentially does the same job, but just a higher quality. Place it on the surface and you twist this until it clicks into place. It could go up near our roof line. Give it a twist until it clicks to the end and that's it it's not going to come off of that angle is adjustable and so is the direction of course to remove it you just twist the opposite direction and then there's a little tab on the suction cup that you peel back it has a really nice tenacious grip and it's nice and compact look for a link in the description of the video mm -hmm.